Hello and welcome to Fect TV Sport. I'm George O'Callaghan and for tonight, for the first time, we are live in, stream live, in, live to everybody around the world. Joining me today is no other than the man himself, Conor O'Neill, my usual guest, and our famous musician, Roy Buckley. Welcome to the show, lads. Thanks very much. Thanks, Thanks for Thank having you. us, George. Happy New Year. We're going to start tonight <laughs> with a sport, really, that I feel has been neglected for the last few years. It's basketball in Ireland. Um, seems to be a big change in the last t decade on basketball, lads. Connor, have any opinions yeah, on it? Definitely, definitely. Um, I was growing up watching basketball uh, many times in Neptune. You couldn't even get tickets for Neptune Stadium. And um, it was always RT were involved, that, that the television was involved with it, you know. And that brought the crowds. And the quality was always there. You players coming in from the States. And um, Team Borgland at the time were, were probably the team. Up against demons and um, yeah, blue demons with our tour and, and Neptune as well, you know, and they were great days. Like Net Neptune State, the atmosphere. Did, there's nothing better than watching a basketball game live because it's score for score, defense, offense, and it's so fast the game that um, it's a fantastic sport to watch. But um, I just think that if if the legs of RT or so, some or even TV3 got involved again, it would be great for the sport. You know, we're not seeing it the way we should see it, the way it's going at the moment. How about yourself, Roy? Do you, do, you, well, do you remember the basketball, the good days in Norte and I, I remember taking the, it to the, to, the, to, the, to the key, Trevor? Yeah, I, I, I remember it was always, as you said, of Blue Demons and, uh, and Neptune were always up there, you yeah. know. And uh, they used to get a lot of TV coverage with me on, you know. But um, I'd say it's just getting it back into schools properly and giving it a, a push again, you know. Right. Re Really get it up and going. It was actually a really exciting weekend in the basketball. Uh, UC, UCD Marions um, played UCD Demons. Demons won just barely. They had a last minute shot from uh, Karen O'Sullivan to win the game. And in another game with the Cork teams uh, not being too biased for us from Cork, but uh, Borgosh Neptune won 77 to Dublin Inter by 65. So the Cork teams are seen to be doing well. And it was really big in Cork for a while, wasn't it? Uh, definitely, Jar. And like, I totally agree with Roy there that um, the schools, they need to get it into the schools that start motivated again. Like these guys who are playing here now at the moment and the weekend they've just put in, they train very hard during the week. They, they deserve their credit for what, what they're training for at the weekends. They want the crowds to be at the game to lift it up, you know? So the thing is with, with Cork basketball, which is very good, they just need more momentum and more coverage and things like that and where um, maybe television can get involved and promote the sport better in, for the country, you know? Well, the defending champions are uh, UL Eagles. They won 91 against Moy Cullen by 73 points. So it is spread around, around Ireland. You know, the yeah. Dublin teams are strong as well. Um, DCU Saints and um, beat Colester 61. So I just wonder whether the media, and it's something that I've been trying to get on, in fact, if you would love people to come on and speak about basketball and uh, where it's going wrong, or why isn't the interest there anymore, or, or do we even have an international team? So it would be great if, uh, if people would come on Twitter tonight, speak to us on, at FEC TV, and uh, ask us any questions or fill us in what exactly is going on in the basketball world. So moving swiftly on, we're going to have uh, a look at Katie Taylor winning the RTE Sports Personality of the Year. Did you, did you see it, Roy? I didn't see that, but uh, I remember we, we were playing a gig in Port Leash when she won the gold. And uh, John Spillane uh, wrote a song right there and then for her. I think it's on YouTube somewhere, but Katie Taylor, what a credit to the country, you know? She is. What a credit to the country. She won a poll um, this week as the most loved sport, Irish sports person. The whole country was behind her, you know? Like, she she's, she, she well say, deserved that. The one thing I must say there, though, sorry, right, Ed, is that um, the night when typical RT, right? And you have to hammer RT for this. Because <laughs> um, the, when, when they were giving Katie her award, the thing kept breaking for adverts. And um, I've seen that RT would disgrace them for it was it was it was a joke to be honest. Like poor Katie, like what she achieved, and any time she went to say something, Darren Maloney went to say something to her, and um, it went off to an advert break. It was like of all the things of the whole year, and RT fucked it up. <laughs> it was just like the English, um, I suppose the English awards just looked so much better than the Irish awards. The Irish awards just looked like it was thrown in a room and they were like giving the trophy, like, you know, there's only one presenter. She, she won a gold medal for the country, you know, like. Exactly. And they were sitting on steel chairs. Our, st our chairs here tonight are more comfortable than what they were sitting on. <laughs> and there was two bottles of Ballygone on the table, right? And it, 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 you would see, like, even the race horse, they, they had um, Katie Walsh with her father, and Darren Malone, he was rushing it. Did, did, wouldn't you think they would have sat him into somewhere in the Burlington and give him a meal and things like that? It, would, it was the most amateur show ever. And uh, for then that to happen at the end with Katie was just icing on the cake with our deal. 
Another thing I spoke to Connor about this a few times. Rory McIlroy has come out saying he won't, uh, he may not compete in the 2016 Olympics, Roy, because he doesn't know what country to de declare for. Oh. What do you think of that? <laughs> From an outside point of view, I uh, just that's that's he, he's fighting a battle there, like with, with the two countries he could declare for, because like both sides are going to be saying, "What's wrong with us?" You know, why doesn't he want to? Why doesn't he want to? Yeah. Declare for us, you know, and like, I don't know, man, I, I know who I'd be declaring for, <laughs> <You know? laughs> that's all I'd say, I know. Do you think there's a point of view? I think he's come out this week, right, for the last month, I know I know he's gone off sport, but for the last month there's been riots in Belfast about the waving of a flag over a building, so I think Rory's after picking up on the, the mantle, like, there'll be world war forever who he chooses, so I think he's after doing the right thing and taking a step back, and, and not committing yet, like, you know. Going on to a sport that's close to, to Roy's heart, the darts. We had our first world champion of the year, no other than the power himself, Phil Taylor. Absolutely Anyone will be watching legend. that over the Christmas, I've been glued to it. It was fantastic, fantastic tournament and a fantastic final, George. The, um, Taylor, like, he, <coughs> he started off slowly, but um, Van Gerwen was throwing that. He just turned Van Gerwen to butter in the end. Like. When Garrowan was throwing 40s right. and 60s. I, I, I was watching, but I thought Taylor was in trouble from the start, though. I was yeah. saying, like, you know, but uh, Kim, I, I think the thing that, that stole that whole uh, competition was the controversy with himself and uh, Barney. Barney. Yeah, well, Taylor came out and apologised, but he did look really bad, didn't he, with the whole yeah, situation? Like, uh, all right, like Barney held onto his hand, all right, you know, and he probably shouldn't have because Taylor was trying to celebrate or whatever, you know. But. Uh, I don't know, he might have overreacted, did he? I think, I thought, in this tournament, Taylor looked really grumpy. He looked as if he was showing his age in this tournament. You know, he looked really, he wasn't his bubbly self, really, until the final, yeah. really, you know. On, on the other rounds, he did look under pressure. But then, and if you see the interview afterwards, after he beat Barney, did you, did yes, you see that? And, and he, he put a few yeah. digs in there, like, saying that he had a cold and he beat him with a cold. Yeah, exactly. That's like his was, excuse, he had a cold. Oh, Taylor, <laughs> Taylor used to come out before, right? And, and just, just win the games. He wouldn't even have to comment or have a post-match comment, right? But no, he feels the pressure himself for the first time ever in, in the longevity he's had. Like. But it's just total reverse psychology <coughs> because Barney wished to play Taylor in the semi-final. So that's all Taylor needed. That was the kind of boost Taylor needed then, that him. Barney's wishing to, to play me in the semi-final. And off goes Taylor then, and he's just any bit of momentum in him. It was total reverse psychology. Taylor was like, oh, I had a bit of a cold. Oh, I'm not feeling well. It was, it was a amazing total, to watch Barney. He was like filling up with tears in some games, wasn't he? Was yeah. To yeah. see that happen. Very emotional. Very emotional. Do you know what though, Van Gorman uh, surprised me though? Like, he's young too though. Like, he, there's a lot of learning there. Isn't he, he? he really like, was the entertainer of the whole tournament, wasn't he? He definitely. was fantastic He, he was, watch. and he was the underdog for, for, for the most part, you know? But like, I think there's a lot of people, even like I'm a Taylor fan. I, I'll, I'll tell you the truth, ah, you know. I, I think I think he's brilliant, mm. but like for parts of that, like I was saying, you know what? If if this kid actually won, it would you know just start the whole pot again, and you and know he, he's definitely going to win at some stage, if not next year. Yeah, but, but he, um, he was injured. He was going to the late Norian physio for uh, treatment for the for the whole tournament. Yeah, yeah, he had, like, he had he, something with his. He, he, yeah, he's quite, he's injury he's or a something. Like guy. Yeah. The, the Dutch are very likeable anyway, aren't they? they? Do you know what I mean? What amazed me was the um, English crowd getting behind him, you know, instead of the English lads, yeah. you know. And I think, um, was it, oh, maybe it was um, one of the English lads, I can't remember his name now, kind of came out and said, you know, oh, the crowd are getting behind the Dutch lads instead of us here, you know, and they kind of yeah, got yeah. put out by it. So. Should be what entitled you think? to follow whoever you want to follow, you know, like, yeah. that's yeah, what it's like all about. It. You just want to, you want to see, it. I think what does it for the darts is the way they check out. That just drives me mad, the way they can check out 170 without blinking an eye. That's the kind of player you want to see. And the, the two of them did it in the final, but in the end, Taylor's, Taylor's experience just turned into well, butter like, in the end. Like. It's, it's, it's real sport for the fans. Like, it, you know, you're watching it there now and every time someone gets a 180, they're all holding up signs and yeah, this dressed up. Great, and, right. You know, or dressed as a costume and all that. It's great, crack. You should be able to give the banter for your favourite other pe person you don't like, like or whatever, yeah. you know? Quickly before we go, do you think it should be an Olympic sport in 2016? Most Brazil? definitely. I definitely advocate for that. That's what it's... To be saying, people... Yeah, darts, down the pub, practising, whatever. I remember watching an interview with Bernie just before the semi-final, actually, he said, four hours straight, he practises on doubles. Imagine doing that four hours straight on doubles. It's definitely an Olympic sport. It should definitely be. What about you, Roy? What was his famous quote again? Um, 
tailors if you want to beat me enough to practice 25 hours a day. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Brilliant, you know. So we'll move on anyway. We're going to speak about another uh, person you admire a lot, Connor, is uh, Andy Murray. Andy Murray, yes, yes. He's won the <coughs> Brisbane International. Excuse He's a winner again. Coming yeah. up to the and, um, if anyone fancies a bet, I think get on him straight away for BBC Sports Personality Year. I he, think this year he's getting stronger and stronger, and I think Wimbledon, he will take Wimbledon. I know, I know we're talking six months away, but... He's got the Australian year. Open first now in the next few yeah, weeks. Yeah. And the thing about this, what interests me, was that he dedicated uh, it to his ill friend in his Davis Cup, who's got uh, leukaemia. So he was emotional again, you know, it's yeah. very, we've seen him emotional in Wimbledon, but we've seen him in a different side again exactly. recently. So. Longer though, you know, like if, you're, if you feel like you're fighting for something, you know, or playing for something, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out. Drive you on, you know. Was he Scottish or, Br or British when he won when he won at the weekend? <laughs> like, do you know, because that, that, that's a big far part that they're saying, is he British? Murray Hill, Henman Hill, they'll all go for it. Like When he's winning, he's British. When he's not, he's Scottish. He has a fantastic chance of winning the Australian Open because Nadal is actually out sick with a stomach fire, so he won't yeah. be competing in that. So it's not mm. a chance for him to, again to win a Grand Slam. You never yeah. know, do you? And I actually like Nadal. Nadal strong as anything. Like, and um, struggling at the moment with all these injuries from torn hamstrings and things like that and no stomach bug so Murray Murray's there I think this is his year brilliant great stuff and it's a big call isn't it it is a big call big call, big call no man. I do Connor I, is our, it Connor is our top tip star in this, <laughs> in this place believe me we're going to speak about Lawrence Armstrong now we spoke about him a few times being a drug treat, treat cheat sorry I put my teeth in but uh, he's going to come out with a public confession yes. to say exactly what went on do you think he should yeah. Of everything, like he's gonna say. His, his lawyer has. Uh, well, I know he's actually called Tim Hemming, believe it or not. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. But uh, he's gonna come out and. Uh, but he's been stripped of all his titles from what year is it? Nine, yes. Nine, is it? Is it? Um, I'm not too sure. Is, is it seven wrong? titles. Did it? Is it seven? Stripped but of what, the seven titles and. Um, but is, does he have titles from before then that uh, are, yeah. are gonna stay? He he competes in the pentathlon and um, that's what he started off with at 15 years of age. And he always, he always won those tournaments, you know. But he wants to go back competing in those, but he can't. So because he has to come out banned, and confess. Yeah. But where he's stuck it between a rock and a hard place is that if he comes out and confesses, there's so many people want to sue him down through the years between sponsors. Everything, yeah. Uh, everything, everything he stood up for, they're all against him now. So he's stuck rock and a hard place whether he can confess publicly or not. Like. But I think he should just go gracefully and just go into the background. He's coming out fight. He's fighting a losing battle. Uh, well, like especially if he's guilty, yeah, he, he he might as well just leave it go. You know? Just let it go. Like, <laughs> yeah. Take up something else, maybe. Yeah. Because he's just always remembered as the drug cheat, you know. But then again, still though, like is is the from maybe it's just me, like, but I still think like for any guy to, to win the Tour de France was it five times or seven times seven or seven times, times yeah. like after having cancer. Yes. Yeah, you know, some cyclists stood by him. It is. That's still a big yeah. achievement. Like, it's you a know? massive achievement, but. He had so much of a control over his team. He made so many people lie for him as well as him lying himself. Yeah. Like that. I suppose that it's not fair to the other competitors, though. I wonder what Cheryl Crow thinks. <laughs> she was engaged to him for a while. Like. I know, he's had a good few, <laughs> few good relationships, that man. <laughs> if you want to come on Twitter, ask us any questions. We have a few already tonight. We got one from Kevin Drennan. He said, what do you make of Suarez's handball last night? Was it Henri like or accidental? <coughs> um... Do you know what I mean? The referee linesman. How many officials do you need to see it? Like, they're like, nobody saw it. The whole world could see it before they even before they even started talking about it afterwards in the commentary. You could see it was a handball. But what's Suarez to do? It's not Suarez's fault. What's he going to do? Oh, I handle that there. Sorry. Are they going to turn it around? You know, I that's think, not going to happen. Like. I think when you play in a game like that, when that happens and you score because you're caught up in the game, it happens. But really, if he did go to the referee and say I handled it, he, all the Negativity and racism row about him would have cleared. It would have went. It was like the Canio did it years ago. He was a bad yes, boy, and all yes. of a sudden, then he picked the ball up against Everton. That's and, right. Yeah, you know, he yeah, could have yeah. changed everybody's opinion of him yesterday. Yes. But he was probably just too caught up in the game. But looking back in hindsight, he probably had a great chance there to really rectify and everything. Charge, like you, you've, you, like you have a good career in, in football. Like if you, you put yourself in the heat of the game, if it was you, what would you have done? No, I would cheat all the way. The way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I would. But the thing is, this show like, to me. Actually, I seen a clip this evening on Sky Sports News. Actually, George, um, Robbie Fowler did it years ago. I remember David Seaman challenged him. He went down for a penalty. Liverpool one oh, two yeah, one. That's right. And um, Fowler <coughs> was claiming to the ref, "No, no, no, it's definitely won the penalty." And um, Fowler missed the penalty again. But 
uh, Trigger put it into the net. That's right. Nah, afterwards, like, saved it was 2-1. Yeah, that's and right. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know, but what's what is he, they're trying to blame, as Brendan Rodgers said yesterday, if it was any other player, there'd be nothing said about it, you know? It's just this whole Suarez thing, he's just a, such a personality, like he it's keeps doing bad things. Like, goals for fun for Liverpool. Yeah, yeah just yeah, like to yeah. thank Kevin Drennan for that message. It's at Fecti TV on Twitter, so please send in your questions. We have another question from Alan Keane. He said, what is George's opinion on what can be done to help players in the League of Ireland during the off-season with those out of contract? It's an issue that I brushed over last week or this week in an article saying about players not being paid for two or three months and now they're back for pre-season, they're not getting paid for the next eight weeks. You know, it's hard times for people with family that's, not being paid over Christmas. It's just, that's just not on. Like, a club wants a player to turn up and train and if, and if a player puts in his wholehearted effort, training, pre-season, pre-season pre friendlies, everything, he deserves to be rewarded for that. Like, they can't just come up with rules like that. What, what's a man to do? Is he supposed to be working so <coughs> trying to pick up a bit of work while he's training like that? Oh, that's, that's just not on. It's, it's, the club, it's, the club's it's one of the reasons I got you on today, tonight, Roy, because I, I wanted to see your opinion on it. You know, If you were playing music and people stopped paying you for three months and said, all right, when it gets to February or March again, we'll start paying you again. Like, would you see it anywhere else in the world? <laughs> people don't pay us at the best of times, man. <laughs> 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 um, I, I, you know, I just... just well, well, it's on, on, on the football topic there, like, you know, it's like any um, professional athlete, you know, like, he has to tailor his life around this to his his, his profession, you know. So, it, like, the three months off that he has, he's not really off, because he still has to kind of watch himself and keep in some bit of shape for next season, you know, so, fair is fair, like, he should probably be looked after, you know. Maybe, maybe, okay, maybe come to some compromise where they reduce the wages or something, but, like, you know, do do something for him, like you know. Yeah. It was funny for me when I wrote the article. The only negativity I got was from Cork City and Shamrock Rovers yeah. supporters, and they're the ones that are ran by the fans. You by know, the fans, exactly. I kind of felt yeah, that yeah. the fans were coming out in a point of view that they were kind of making the opinion that like all oh, the players deserve deserve what they get because they got plenty of money years ago. But what I was the point I was trying to make across is the new generation lads are coming in, the yeah. 20, 21 year olds want there, it's not their fault. I think the book lies with the FAI, George. The, there's only one people to blame. That, that is, any association, if you put that across to, any, to the FAA in England and you told them, it's just, it's just this joke, philosophy again, the FAI are the governing body. There should be no player paid. If he's putting in his heart and soul for that club, there should be no restrictions on when he's getting paid and not getting paid. He either is playing for the club and under contract or not, and the contract should involve getting paid the way they should correctly it's, it's be like paid. It's like every right? other job, isn't it? Like when you get your holidays for yeah, exactly. two weeks a year or whatever yeah. it is, or you're, you're still strike. paid, you know? Do you know what I mean? You have a union or, or a footballing body the way the FA have a player's body, you know? That's not here. What about the GA? We spoke to Paul Gavin re recently. He said the time's going to come soon that it's going to have to go professional. Like they're making 200 million a year out of it in the yeah. GA, where aren't the players getting well, looked after? Well, this is the, uh, the complete opposite to what we were just speaking about. The GA players aren't paid at all, are they? You know? Yeah. But Paul is making the point that it's going to have to come to a stage they soon. They're going to have to, have to be definitely deserve it. Do you think they deserve to be paid? Of course, because I, I, I think that the uh, GA players are, well, I, I don't want to say they're more determined than any other, um, any other sport, but you can see there's fire in their belly when, when, when they're doing it, you know? That's it. Like, you, you watch a soccer match, and you watch Ronaldo or someone who gets a hard tackle and he goes down the ground. You watch a G player get a belt of a hurley and he gets up straight away because he won't give it to the other guy to say that he put him down, you know? Yeah. That's there, like, that, that's... Do you agree with that, Connor? Oh, I don't agree with that. You don't agree with that? Like, don't agree with that no. no. I, well, I would, like, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> the GA's biggest fan, you know, because, because of the clannish thing, as I said before. But I must admit, if you just look, take Jim McGuinness there, I know the way he's got the job with Celtic two to three days a week. The level, I watched the programme recently with him as well, the, the level he's got that whole squad playing and they won the Sam this year. But the thing is, they do deserve to be paid. The, the GA is making enough money from grassroots that the top pros, the top players, well I suppose we can't call them pros, but the likes of Paul Galvin deserves to win or deserves to earn money, you know? If the GA went professional, I think it would end up like the soccer players with people being a bit... Blase, turning jealous yeah. about, against them and turning against because then they're getting paid. Because because when people aren't getting money, I think people are like, oh, should I get nothing for it? But as soon as people start getting money for things, things change. You That's think true. you think it will take the passion from the game, like? It will. T it won't take. It won't take the passion, but it will take the kind of 
the spe what's special about yeah. it will probably go out of it again because it will just become a business. What I think, George, is what it would do for the country would be fantastic for, for kids in schools. It is the most loved sport in schools, right? Well, you're but brought you'd up with it, like, you know. You'd be brought up with it, right? And that you could achieve something to become a professional GA player, you know? And that would be some goal to reach for some kids going through school. It'd, it'd be fantastic for communities, you know? Well, like, I, I'd, I'd love to see Irish kids being paid for a national sport rather than, you know, another sport. A foreign sport. Yeah, yeah you know. Definitely, yeah. Like, like, I'm going to move on quickly, lads, because we're going to start kind of going to more international news and, and the football side of things that's happening over the Christmas periods. Really, with the darts and the football, has been the only thing really that has been going on. Yeah. But before we do, we have another text. It's from Sully Brazil. He said, At FEC TV, what's the deal with Shane Long to Lazio? What does George have to say with the City fans who think he's a mercenary shit star? So, <laughs> 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 thanks for that, Sully. Well, boys, does anyone want to answer that question about me first? Or well, I'll, just, I'll just, what I, I'll answer there, but mercenary, I don't know about that, George. Um, I'll just say 2005, was it? Um, international, or Irish Player of the Year. It's yeah. a long time ago now. Yeah, well, come here, it's not that long, really. It's only a couple of years ago. But we have, on FEC TV today, we have heard about Shane Long has, is in talks with Lazio in a London hotel tonight. So we've had it from a good source that he's speaking to them. Bad and his move. Was at the weekend. Bad I move. think so. Move. Yeah, look at Gaza. <laughs> I think that's a dream move for anyone, though, to go anyway, to Lazio. To Lazio, but like, Italian football's in the mire, like, between all the, the match fixing, it, it, like, Champions League. Italian football used to be top of the tree, it's not anymore. I think it's bad to move from the best league in the world to go to the Italian league. It can be forgotten out there, the language barrier, do you know? Keep, please send in your messages. Um, I love to see it, even if it is going to give out about me. I'll answer about Cork City in a second. But keep sending your messages to at FECTV. And on the Facebook as well, you can get us at FECTV.com. So, lads, I'm going to ask you about one of the, the people that I think constantly does story after story. It's Mario Balotelli. He had a little fight with Mancini, Mancini. a few days ago. <laughs> how, would you, how would you treat a player like that if you were a manager, Roy? I think he's a legend. I think he's very controversial. You know, he's keeping the attention on his club without even being on the soccer pitch. You know, he's brilliant. He's a spoofer. They say the most eh? money out of all the Man City players in the marketing over in Asia comes from him. Yeah. The money they make from his short sales. So he's there, man. You know, that's his job. But the thing with he's Man City, like, what were the cameras doing at the training ground the other day? They're, the ground where they are at Carrington, they're right next to the road. So that's where all the um, the newspaper journal, the paparazzi, to be watching it, like. But you can imagine two English players going at it, but then you've two Italians, so the whole argument just turned up, turned, the volume as well turned up at that, you know? I think the point, when you hear the ex-pros talk about it, they just say, oh, snotting happens all the time, and from my own experience, it does happen all the time, yeah, there's always yeah. fights, but I know Man City's training ground is actually very close <coughs> to, the, to the road, to the road yeah. so they can't get away from it, yeah. it's actually, yeah. you, you can watch training wherever you want, you know, it is open, Yeah. but um, it's something maybe that they But he's a space, like, like George, like... On a serious note, Balotelli, what's he done for the club, like? Do you know? He, he set up Aguero for that final pass to win the league. Bast! <laughs> he's on a bit, there's not much. Ah, but hold on a sec, you know, like, you'd want more out of him. Like, he's on 220 grand a week, like, uh, Balotelli. Come on, what's he doing? Do you know what I mean? Whereas you can see Tevez works, Aguero works, Sabaleta works, company. They're the, they're the bone of Man City, like, Balotelli, I wouldn't have him in my way. <laughs> Honestly, I'm telling you, no, he wouldn't get a game of Wolves if I was in charge. <laughs> what would you do with him? Well, lucky you're not in charge. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, like, he is, he is a hothead, isn't he, you know? Definitely. But, um, no, I, to be honest with you, I, I kind of like the controversy going on. It's just, it's always something to read. It's something kind of, you make you laugh more than anything, you know? What, what has he done this time? You know, I keep him there. <laughs> what about Lampard? Oh, classic question. Like, Chelsea. Chelsea deserve everything that comes to him. What are they doing to that man? They reject him today. They're not, they're not bringing Lampard in next season. They're letting him go from the club. What he's done for that club, the hours and service and time he's put into that club. And he, he told him, he's on 150 grand a week, he told him he'd take a cut of 100 grand a week, down to 50 grand a week, and they still wouldn't give him a rolling contract after all he's serviced. Like. And I, do you know what? There's one man that came up, it was on one of the forum, United forums tonight, UWS, United We Stand, the Man United fanzine. Well, it was today that it came out. 
that Ferguson would love to take him up, up to Old Trafford. Watch this space. It's a big decision, man. What do you think, Roy? That's a big decision. Perf Matthew. he would never go to nine. Perfect like replacement for scores. Like? Why wouldn't he? Wouldn't they he? said that about Van Persie as well. It's fact. Bring him up, give him a year. I think he'll go abroad. How old yeah. is Lampard now? 34. 34. I had a message on Twitter actually last night about loyalty in football. That players show no loyalties. Well, Chelsea have just shown exactly there that there's no loyalty to players yeah. when they finish them. Like Roy Keane, Steve Bruce, when they finished, yeah. they got yeah, rid of them, didn't they? Yeah, yeah but look, look at the loyalty. United were always good at loyalty with, with say, Gary Neville, Scholes, Giggs. It, it's, just, it's, it's an easy win situation. They did it with Mike Lowe, and Mike Lowe didn't take it. A year rolling contract, put in the time, put in the time and effort, <coughs> and you'll be rewarded at the end of the year. I Giggs does it, Scholes does it. And Lampard was offering Chelsea, please keep me here. And then they just shaft him the way they've shafted him. That Abramovich boy, he's some gambler. And one of the other big things was Demba Bag on the Chelsea. Good signing. You couldn't judge him the other day, no. Seven million's a snip for him, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Is he replacing Lampard, is he? What? Could be no. with Torres. Could be with Torres. But you couldn't judge him the other day in the Fizzy Cup. Or the FA Cup. The whole... That's another thing, George. The FA Cup... Since the BBC lost the FA Cup, the whole... Lovable affair with it, I think, is gone. Do you know? You see Chelsea win a 5-1 in Southampton the other day. Yeah, so what? Another you know? interesting thing that happened over the weekend, uh, Roy, is that uh, Casillas, the Real Madrid keeper, has been dropped for the last two games by Mourinho because he thinks he's been backstabbed by Casillas. So he was left on the bench. There's an uproar in Real Madrid over it. But as luck has it, the keeper got sent off <laughs> after five minutes for Real Madrid <laughs> and Casillas had to come on. It's the best story ever, like, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, is yeah. it karma? Is it, you know? Yeah, karma, definitely. But uh, do you know what? It shows a point that some players are just born lucky. For instance, if that keeper keeps a clean sheet, he'll play for the next couple of games and Casillas will sit in the bench. No, he's back in the team and he'll, he'll have to play. Definitely. He is a fantastic keeper to Spain, but I don't know. Like, is he the best keeper ever? No, I don't think so. Do you know what I mean? What about um, Mourinho? Do you like him? Yeah, he's another guy. He's another. He's some balls to do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, but like, again, his, like, record, his record speaks for itself, right? Like. But, but doesn't he always have something? Like, isn't there always something he's going to do? Like, he was the yeah. same when he was at Chelsea, like, you know, like, he did, like, there's always a controversial moment with him as well, you know? He's only around 10 years and he's three more trophies than Wenger, like, do you know? He's won the Champions League, do you know? Three different clubs. Three different clubs. Wenger had the last one final. It, they just, I, I was reading recently that just they put Wenger and Mourinho together. You have to love the guy. Like what he did with that Inter Milan team, the daisy chain, as I used to call it. Like you just couldn't get past the defence. The whole defence were holding hands. It was like a daisy chain. <laughs> you just couldn't get past them. They won the, There's no way that team should have won the Champions League. Do you know? No, Schneider was unbelievable that year. But Mourinho, you, got, you have to love the guy. Schneider to QPR. <laughs> Harry Redknapp's done more dodgy dealings than that. One of the last points we're going to speak about is the rugby. Any interest in the rugby, Roy? I don't really watch rugby too much, to be honest. Which I watch if, if, uh, if Munster are playing or Ireland are playing or something, you know, but... I'm not, not really a huge rugby fan. You'd be surprised, George. I have a comment on it. Um, again, watch, I watched every minute of Saturday night's game. Musgrave Park. Honestly, I thought, I thought it was headstones in the middle of the field. The place was so dead down there. It was just no atmosphere. Munster didn't, didn't even... They came out. All, all guns players. O'Gara, fair use to him. Um, winning most yeah, capped Munster most player. player yeah. 234. But um, the rest of the game, Cardiff Blues relished it. There was no atmosphere down there. Cardiff Blues just said, what's this? This isn't like coming to Munster, coming to Tormund. This Tormund effect, they have to just start playing a Tormund. And I reckon this Rob Penny, he's a spoofer. His commentary, if you watch, he's after... You know, he's after watching the same game. You're after watching it all, you know. He's just, he's such a... You know? I suppose the big thing is Brian O'Driscoll coming back for Leinster as well. Massive, massive. And the Lions tour. Yeah, I think they should make him captain. But I want, want, what Gatland won't do it, I don't think. But um, he deserves it. What a player. You see the way that he came back to United and they were how sync. No, Edinburgh weren't great. Like, but how, how in sync they were with Driscoll, <coughs> Kearney, you three lot art. And who, who else is there? It was Ka or, sorry, Kearney and O'Driscoll. You know, two lines, two future lines anyway this well, summer. Like, they've so. got big games this weekend, so we wish all the, all the, all the teams the best from, our, or from us here at Effect TV. I'm going to finish with a probably the most popular sport at the minute because Pamela Anderson's in it, skating and ice. <laughs> yeah, I missed that last night. I heard she got voted out, didn't she? Oh, I love that series linking that, I think. <laughs> you couldn't do that to poor Pamela, could you? Yeah, it's terrible. It's the, 
The big story in the one from Carnation Street, stealing boyfriends, all right, I've seen that. It's something that we'll be keeping a close eye on anyway <laughs> over, the, over the next few weeks. <laughs> so from everyone here on Feck TV, thank you for all your messages on Twitter and Facebook. Um, keep it coming in at FeckTV.com and at FeckTV at tw on Twitter. I'd like to thank my guests, Connor and Roy, for all That's their right. chat tonight. And thank you for coming to our first show and watching us live here on Feck TV. Good night.